Good day and welcome to this episode of Focus on. I'm Zanella Morrison. Today we step into the world with ATFX, a globally regulated fintech broker who has their sights set on South Africa and the rest of the continent. Joining me today to expand more on this is Monty Barnard, Chief Operating Officer at ATFX Africa and Linton White, Regional Head at ATFX Africa. So let's get straight into this topic of of, of a world that's new but not new because ATFX was established in 2017 and has quite a broad reach. So perhaps, Monty, you can take a st start us off by really talking about the background and how long the business has been in existence for and what it brings to South Africa. Thank you so much. Um, yes, so it was established in 2017 uh, in, um, in predominantly China and um, has penetrated the Southeast Asian market from there. Um, last year, they went on a big um, acquisition drive. Uh, there was an acquisition in Australia, um, some licenses in Dubai. And then lastly, November last year, we completed the acquisition of Quasi Financial Services, um, which is now ATFX Africa. Um, and we have all the uh, relevant licenses mm. to operate as a FSP or financial services provider in South Africa and an ODP or over the counter derivatives provider. Mm. Um, so yes, they've uh, grown very quickly and exponentially over the last seven years and the last acquisition was uh, South Africa. So let's, let's get into what it meant to, uh, to now build up the structures. You know, what did you have to put in place and how has been the journey, be it regulatory and all other things that you had to do to now say we're running and we're going to conquer the market? So I think obviously it started with, you know, getting the right team players in place. So um, ATFX acquired Quasi Financial Services in South Africa, which has been operational and running for a number of years. Um, so there's a lot of experience on the table already. Um, but bringing in different facets into the business as well, you know, the, the right people to, to lead the expansion into, you know, first establishing the footprint in South Africa and then expanding into Africa was very important. So we've embarked on, on a journey of, of uh, recruitment and making sure that we have the right number of people in each department and also the right people in each department to make sure that we've got the skills on hand for the expansion project. Um, from a regulatory perspective, it's, it's been challenging. You know, um, I think South Africa is very renowned for um, taking certain amounts of time to complete certain projects and things as simple as changing the name of a business could take a period of time. So in other words, changing from Quasi Financial Services to ATFX Africa, you know, took a number of months. Um, and, and through that time, although it gave us time to complete the recruitment, um, we learned a lot about what not to do and what to do. So I think our team is ready and I think that, um, you know, we're poised for, for the, the expansion project to now really take place. And, and as of the beginning of June, actually, uh, only were we really ready to start uh, penetrating the South African and African market from a, a regulatory standpoint, mm -hmm. ticking all the boxes, you know, making sure that the name change is done, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that uh, we're offering the product in the right name as mm -hmm. ATFX Africa, not under Quasi anymore. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of legal Mm -hmm. things that had to happen in the background before we could actually physically go to market and we are now at that stage and it's it's really looking positive yeah and it's not just mm. name change in terms of just changing the name but it's getting the permissions Correct. to change the names and like and it's really and, and yeah, yeah the yeah, licensing yeah. has to change every single Correct. element that you are acquiring mm. you know you're changing all those elements but do you think now that um you, you know maybe expand on the market that you're actually now getting ready to get into. I mean, how competitive is it? Uh, and what are your expectations of what you can do as an entrant? Are you an early as well, early entrant that's from a South African perspective uh, for, for people who are trading on such platforms? We're definitely an early entrant. Um, I think uh, derivative trading has been uh, around for 24, 25 years in South Africa specifically. Um, so it is, I wouldn't, it is probably saturated at the moment, but with the, regula the regulatory change that the FECA is making, um, you know, and with the regulatory change becoming more stringent, there will be less and less players in the market because it will be more and more difficult to comply with these regulations. Mm -hmm. So I think we're uh, in a very good position with a long-term view um, to be around and to be one of one of the brokers in South Africa, and and so for people who want to trade, you know those FX traders who who are what are they getting from a from a platform like yours? Like what is the value proposition that you are that you are giving them? I don't, I don't know if you want to take it, Linton. Yeah, sure. So I think I think that's a very important 
topic to focus on, and it's something that we're very, very uh, mindful of, is what, what sort of sets us apart from the, the competition. You know, what, what, what's different about ATFX as opposed to every other broker that's, that's in our space? And, and I think first and foremost is, is you know, our attention to detail from, from the regulation side and compliance. Um, you know, the, the FSP license is one thing to have, but recently the requirement for the ODP license came into place, you know, where you, you need a separate license to offer over-the-counter derivative products, um, which is something that Quasi Financial Services was a front runner with, and, and they acquired that license long before many of, of our competitors did. Um, and I think that that speaks volumes to the focus of ATFX as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if when, when a requirement like that is launched and, and, and it comes out, it's evident who is front running to be compliant as opposed to who's waiting to see how this affects the market first before we decide to go and follow the rules and regulations. So, so Quasi was really one of the front runners there. And I think that um, ATFX specifically focuses on acquiring businesses who are prone to that type of approach to, to our market. Um, they did the same thing with Rakuten uh, Securities in Australia. Um, you know, really, really focusing on not only the, the license, just getting the license, but also what is behind it, what is the ethos. Um, and I think that that's something that ATFX really brings to the table, is, is, is something that's really focused on security and compliance. Um, you know, we, we say it in the office all the time, and what we're trying to do is, is create almost a private banking feel for our clients, as opposed to just a run-of-the-mill broker. Um, you know, there's, there's so many competitors out there who aren't as focused on regulation and compliance as what we are, and in there is, is security risk for, for their clients. Um, and I think that they are very, very focused on sort of going for the jugular, if I can put it that way, yeah. and just, just trying to extract money out of their clients, rather than giving them a trading experience that, that also helps them, you know, along the road of, of possibly having more success than they would have. Mm. Um, you know, and that also speaks to the educational part of what we do. Um, there's a lot of educational material on our website currently, and I've had a look at most of our competitors, and I don't see the same kind of focus on education as, as what, mm. what we bring into the market. And, and I think that it's one thing to supply a product, especially in financial services. It's one thing to include everybody and say, here's, here's something that you can use and trade with. But it's, it's another thing to, to educate your clients and to mm -hmm. say, listen, if you do want to take part in this, have a look at this first. Understand points A, B, C, and D before you uh, participate in, in our products. Yeah. You know, try a demo account first. Um, it's, it's, yeah. it's just getting used to the platform and understanding it before you move across to actually putting real money on the line. I mean, I'm sitting here gaining such comfort from from your words because mm. when you have a, a ex when you understand the traditional forms of investing and the security and the thoughtfulness that goes into those investment platforms, speculation doesn't give you give me or, or those mm. who are used to traditional systems that level of comfort in okay. terms of how do I get in and feel that I'm not in a, you know, when you imagine speculators, you imagine people just sort of like betting, I might as well as go, go to a betting house, mm. you know. So, so, so um, Monty, in your view, how, how do you think the market is currently maturing and, and, and therefore investors, you know, do you believe that this is a really a great platform to give access? And are we giving access to those who have not had access before? Uh, what about those who do understand traditional means of, of investing? What about businesses? Like paint the landscape picture for me for a product like yours. Um, yes, I think that especially from a youth point of view, there's a, there's a lot easier engagement. We're with the, 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 like us, the older people, we, we tend to look for the traditional investment. But it's something that people are slowly but surely getting more comfortable with, taking their or a portion of their investment into their own hands mm -hmm. uh, to see what they can do with it, to see if they can make a better return. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses, of course, I think um, the traditional investment houses are also... Uh, looking at taking a small percentage of their portfolios and looking at these products and, and incorporating that into the portfolio because it could obviously add massive value for them. Yeah, You also spoke a little bit also even about businesses uh, when they're needing to manage some of their money and putting it in, in, in the form of investments. So even businesses, traders, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, are they seeing this as a place to park their money versus just putting it in the bank? Definitely. And I think if you look at uh, importers or exporters, they obviously have 
carry currency risk if they're paying or getting paid in dollars or whatever other currency that they're dealing with. Um, so they can obviously use this product as well to offset that risk that they have. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if someone were to export uh, something to the US, there's a date at which they will get paid. So they can now um, mitigate the currency risk un up until that point by using our platform. And especially with the RAND being a volatile product, you know, with what's going on in our economy and uh, government, um, you can mitigate those risks with, with a product like ours. Mm. So, and, and then we, we, you're really giving us a good insight, but I, I think that we're speaking a lot from the South Africa perspective, but the continent holds huge opportunity. Mm. Uh, are you excited about it? Are you going to go out with as much force into the, co into the rest of the continent? Very much so. Um, I, think, I think it all starts with understanding, um, you know, financial inclusion in Africa. And I think that at, the, at this point in time, a, a lot of people are excluded. Um, you know, if you, if you look at the African continent as a whole, um, close to 50% of, of people don't, don't even make use of banking facilities yet. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that's, that's an area that really needs a lot of focus on. The technology exists. You know, from a fintech perspective, we've, we've got the technology, but our issue lies in distribution. Uh, distributing those financial products and distributing the opportunity for, for people to take part in these products, in, in thereby financial inclusion throughout Africa, is something that really excites us as a business. And, and we are developing and working on you know, improving our, our technologies from a mobile perspective uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, you know, we've, got, we've got payment uh, uh, setups like M-Pesa, et cetera, that work very well throughout Africa because a lot of people don't use banking facilities, they're using mobile. So I think our, our part of our pen penetration plan is to, is to focus on that, to focus on the mobile side. And so look, you know, we, we do have a fantastic product. We do have something that's going to help Africans have access to, to better financial services and products um, and give them the opportunity to speculate on these products as well, alongside robust educational uh, uh, products that we want to offer as well. Um, and, and I think that that expansion plan combined with, with the education is, is very exciting for us and, and we definitely see a, a large uptick in, in the years to come mm. uh, throughout Africa. Could you have imagined how difficult financial inclusion would be? I mean, you having to work so hard to do something that is fundamentally important for every single human mm. being. But thank you so much for your time. I think that was a great conversation. I'm not leaving because I have a whole lot of <laughs> questions to ask for myself, but that's all we have time for. And it's how we wrap up this episode of Focus On. From Mizela Morrison, it's goodbye for now. Until next time, take care. Mm.